Welcome to the most thorough speed test of the OnePlus 7 Pro, and we're going to be comparing it against not just Samsung's offering, but also the one from Huawei. And to start with, a boot test, but before that, by popular demand, we're going to be turning on performance mode on the P30 Pro, fanatic mode on the OnePlus 7 Pro, and for the S10, optimized mode, because high performance on that phone actually just dials up the screen resolution, which we don't want. I'm going to close all applications on each phone just before I power them down, and now that we've done that, it's ready to see which one wins. Now, bear in mind, this boot test is not really a very good indicator of general phone performance, but a lot of people want to see it, so I've added it in at the beginning here. The Huawei boots up first, the OnePlus 7 Pro about a second after that, and the S10 Plus about a second and a half after that. Now we're on to unlock times, and starting off the OnePlus 7 Pro with its optical in-display fingerprint scanner that's a pretty massive improvement over the one we saw on the 6T. And for each phone, we're gonna unlock 10 times and then get the average score over two separate runs, just to make sure that we're eliminating as much human error as possible. And we can fast forward the second run, you don't need to see the same thing twice, but the story here is that both runs were very similar. We got basically just over 15 seconds for 10 unlocks, so about 1.5 seconds per unlock. Okay, Galaxy S10 Plus, which uses the theoretically more capable ultrasonic technology. Although, I feel like they've weighed their own phone down with this ripple animation, because there's no way to disable it. The upside of this tech is that you pretty much need to just graze your finger against the phone, you barely even need to apply any pressure. Unfortunately for the Samsung though, whilst this technology may well be more secure than the OnePlus is, in terms of raw speed, that phone can unlock on average faster than this one. And then you've got Huawei's, which is also an optical scanner, but ends up having the advantage of no animation whatsoever. No screen on animation, pretty much no unlocking animation, and it just gets straight to the point. And this ends up being slightly faster than both of them on average. Alright, so now we're in the phones, we're going to start with a real world kind of test. We've pulled up KineMaster, which is a video editing application, and I've transferred the same file to each of the phones. We're going to use that file to make a 45 minute clip on each of the phones, and then export it in the same quality. See how long it takes. And yeah, this isn't exactly the most exciting test to watch, so I'm just going to fast forward the whole thing and let's look at the results. Alright, OnePlus 7 Pro finished first, but if you look at the lead between that and the P30 Pro, it is less than 2 seconds, but the lead of the Huawei over the S10 Plus is pretty massive. Time for a bit of benchmarking. We're going to run 3 back-to-back -back and 2-2 two -two benchmarks, and then 2 back-to-back -back Geekbench scores, and take averages of each. And because we're doing them back-to-back, -back, it's also going to help to factor in any performance throttling that might happen when the phones heat up. Bear in mind that the Samsung I'm using is the Exynos version, that's the one you get in the UK or pretty much every other region that's not the US, and it doesn't perform quite as well. If you did get the Snapdragon version, you'd be expecting around 360k, but that still wouldn't change the order of these three phones. OnePlus 7 Pro at the top, then Samsung, then P30 Pro. Okay, Geekbench, and visually this isn't as interesting as Antutu, so again we're just going to skip to our first reading, and it's quite an interesting one. You can see that the P30 Pro comes last place in both the first reading, which is the single core score, and the second one, the multi-core score. But then if we look at the results comparing the OnePlus 7 Pro and the S10 Plus, Samsung consistently wins when it comes to single core score, but then consistently loses when it comes to multi-core. So that predicts that performance will vary based on the application and how it takes advantage of the cores. Okay, for a bit of gaming, and I filmed this section at 60fps so you can see any frame drops we might get. Starting off with the 7 Pro, you can see that the frame rate is fairly consistent, but at the same time it's definitely not maxed out. This isn't a smooth 60 frame per second. The Galaxy S10 Plus has a pretty similar average frame rate, although I did notice a couple of slightly more significant drops. Every now and again when you turn and face a new direction, the frame rate occasionally plummets, and it's enough to slightly pull you out the experience. I didn't really notice any massive significant drops on the P30 Pro, but you can probably tell the average frame rate is lower here. It's running at between 20 and 40 frames per second, with pretty much no deviations on either side. What about emulation, which can be an even more demanding task than trying to play even native Android games? So this right here is Ratchet & Clank made for the PlayStation Portable, and the game itself is capped at 30 frames per second, so it's good to see the OnePlus 7 Pro continues to play at that frame rate. It's pretty much an identical experience on the Galaxy S10 Plus. There were next to no drops. There was only one time when I was jumping that I did notice the frame rate dipped. But apart from that, no errors. The Huawei 2, with its Kirin 980 chip, didn't really have any problems at all. 
Emulation is generally a slightly more CPU intensive task than it is a GPU intensive, and it's more in the GPU tasks that you notice this chip fall behind, so in emulation it's generally okay. Alright, now we're going to use Andro Bench to perform an SQL light test, which is what is used by phones to store data they retrieve from online, so they don't need to continuously re-download stuff. The better a phone does in the test, the faster it can do this retrieval, and we're going to test three times and take an average. And this looks like another one of those cases where the Galaxy S10 Plus, at least the Exynos version I have here, is convincingly in third place. You've then got the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Huawei P30 Pro on top. Alright, application loading times. This is more of a test of a phone's I.O. capabilities than its actual processing power, but OnePlus did claim that their new UFS storage would mean faster uploading, so there's no better way to test it. We've got eight big back-to-back -back games that we're going to load, and the way I've done it is I've selected games which have substantial loading screens, and by doing this we're placing the emphasis of the test on how fast the apps are actually loading. If I picked a bunch of applications that all load in two seconds, then the result is going to be more swayed by any slight differences in the time it takes me to open them. As it stands, if we fast forward to when the first phone finishes, that is the OnePlus 7 Pro, and it is well ahead of the second phone, which is the Huawei P30 Pro. That difference is far more than any human error could possibly be. And so yeah, from this test alone, we can fairly safely say that the OnePlus does load applications faster than the Huawei, which in itself does faster than the Samsung. While we're here, while we have these eight applications we've just loaded up on each phone, it's a good chance to try multitasking. So we're going to go back through those games in reverse order to see which ones have been kept in memory. So far so good, but when it comes to the fourth application, you'll see that the OnePlus has had to reload it. On the next one though, you'll see that the tables are turned. Whilst the P30 Pro and the Galaxy S10 Plus have both reloaded, the application remained in memory on the OnePlus. Interestingly, you'll find that for the next game it had to be reloaded on all three phones, so it's an indicator that that particular game was just hogging a lot of resources. All three phones had to reload the Elder Scrolls, probably for the same reason, but they all managed to keep Subway Surfers in memory. So in total, each phone kept five apps in memory, an equivalent multitasking experience. And right here we've got each model with 8 gigs of RAM, so this is kind of what you'd expect. Storage speeds are more important on this test than ever before, because the OnePlus 7 Pro is one of the first phones in the world to come with UFS 3.0, a new standard in storage technology. So what we're going to do here is use Passmark to measure both internal read and internal write scores. We've already got our first reading, and the Huawei P30 Pro and OnePlus 7 Pro are a fair bit ahead of the S10 Plus, but we're going to do this test three times and take an average score, just to make absolute sure. But yeah, after doing this three times, the result is very much consistent. Huawei P30 Pro on top, OnePlus 7 Pro in second place, and then the S10 Plus. For a more real-world comparison, one by one I've plugged each phone into the MacBook Pro, using a Thunderbolt 3 port and a USB-C to USB-C cable, and we're going to transfer a 2GB file to each phone to see how long it takes. So first things first, OnePlus 7 Pro with 1 minute and 8 seconds. Now that is a fast score, but at the same time it's nothing game changing, it's not mind blowing. And the problem is, is that when you're transferring files, you can only ever transfer as fast as the weakest link in the chain. Say for example you pull up a USB 3 phone but connect it to a USB 2.0 laptop, you're only going to transfer at USB 2.0 speeds. And so, whilst this OnePlus 7 Pro does have fast UFS 3.0 storage, there are only specific usage cases where you'll actually feel it. A perfect example of this point is that the OnePlus 7 Pro has a USB 3.1 port, but the cable that comes with the phone is only USB 2.0 compatible. So after running this test, after transferring the same file from the laptop to each smartphone, you get that the OnePlus 7 Pro and the S10 Plus are kind of fairly close together at the top, and that the Huawei P30 Pro is slower. Nonetheless, we've now done a lot of tests with a lot of different applications, and there's plenty of data to suggest that yes, the OnePlus 7 Pro is one of the fastest smartphones out there for sure. At the same time though, even though it does have this brand new storage standard, we've got enough data to say that it's not in a different league altogether, it's very much on par with its competitors, if not slightly ahead in some areas. But that's not a bad thing, it is a cheaper phone, remember. If you enjoyed this video, a sub would be massively appreciated, and also let me know if there are any particular tests you want to see on the next speed comparison, it's still something I'm working on. My name is Aaron, this is Mr Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.